Our next award is the Henry L. Valley Academic Achievement Award, which honors an individual who has attained notable achievements in the area of academia as an instructor, researcher, and or administrator. Few better exemplify the attributes of this award than Dr. Marvin J. Miller. And he issues part of Marvin's fascination with chemistry, a field in which he's established himself as a leader throughout his career at Notre Dame University. In the true spirit of this award, Marvin continues to pass his enthusiasm on his students in his current role as the George and Winifred Clark Chair Professor of Chemistry at Notre Dame. Obviously, much of Marvin's time at MDSU was spent studying and in the research labs, but if you get a chance, I'm told you should ask him about his after-hour adventures sneaking into the glass blowing lab with his fellow classmates. Now, Marvin and I have a lot in common. You may not believe this, but we do, and we even have more in common as we, as we talk this morning, because uh, he grew up in Dickinson. I spent some time in my career in Dickinson. We knew some of the same people and I helped. And we were at MDSU during exactly the same time. So the slide that you are about to see, that you're seeing right now, is a very complex chemistry formula. And it was this formula that caused my career and Dr. Miller's career to forever diverge. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I was here at exactly the same time that he was. And I think they maybe were both in the same chemistry class one spring when this formula popped up. And a young fellow in the room jumped up and said, I love this stuff, I want more. And I think I said, uh, Melinda Park, uh, <laughs> Park just might be called. <laughs> Marvin's extraordinary career in education may be summed up best on the important mantra he attributes to his experiences at North Dakota State University. Always enjoy each opportunity to learn and to share that knowledge. Let's learn more about my career and Dr. Miller's. <laughs> When Marvin Miller decided to pursue a chemistry education, the Dickinson, North Dakota native quickly became intrigued by NDSU's established professors and young, ambitious faculty. Little did he know those traits would one day come to describe his very own academic career. It wasn't until he arrived at NDSU that Marvin learned about the impact of research, a realization he says was a very pleasant surprise that would change his life forever. Marvin's academic career began to take shape under the influence of Professor S. Peter Pappas, who introduced Marvin to research that would get them published in the Journal of the American Chemical Society. From there, Marvin said, quote, I was hooked on research and discovery for the rest of my life. In addition to research, another NDSU introduction that has made a lasting impact in Marvin's life was meeting his now wife, Patty. Following the mentorship of Professor Pappas, Marvin studied bioorganic chemistry and earned a doctorate from Cornell University in 1976. His postdoctoral work at the University of California, Berkeley, determined the structure of cytochrome C, a protein essential for most living systems. From there, Marvin immediately went to work at the University of Notre Dame, where he has served with distinction in a variety of roles. His notable academic achievements include scores of publications, patents, and papers. Perhaps most important is the direction he provides his graduate students. Alumnus John Wall best summarizes the extent of Marvin's achievements, saying, Dr. Miller's career has represented a nearly perfect blend of research and teaching. The numbers chronicling his academic achievements speak for themselves. Since 1979, Marvin has served as a consultant to Eli Lilly and Company, where Vice President Adam Palkowitz says he is widely recognized as a key leader in striving to convert academic science into biomedical innovation. Marvin and Patty share their academic success. The couple works together at Notre Dame's research lab, where Patty's microbiology expertise and Marvin's chemistry focus have resulted in significant advances in medicinal chemistry. Marvin and Patty are the proud parents of Chris, Katie, Joey, and Carl, and they have six grandsons. NDSU is honored to have played a role in the formula for Dr. Miller's success. His notable achievements have clearly earned him the 2012 Henry L. Bali Academic Achievement Award. Please help me welcome my classmate, Dr. Marvin Miller.
and says thank you, thank you, thank you. And I feel very humbled to be here, very proud to be here as well. Um, usually when I'm introduced, <coughs> I uh, walk back up to the podium and then we say first slide please. But that was stolen from me. I saw some of our research on that very exciting chemistry slide that we have to <laughs> Um, and usually after I speak for an hour, and today I'll keep it going there too, um, and then I have my acknowledgments, but we'll skip to the acknowledgments, because uh, and, 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 and that's the most important thing in the event of talk. But before I do that, I have to say, <clears throat> I'm really excited because uh, not only are we celebrating North Dakota, but we're celebrating Norwegian North Dakota Day, right? <laughs> because uh, my mother's maiden name was Anderson, her father, is a Norwegian, was a Norwegian. He homesteaded in 1902. Each year, father by five years. <laughs> <laughs> in North Dakota. So we have uh, tremendous uh, interests and common, I think, commonalities here that we can uh, celebrate together. Well, I, of course, want to thank those who are involved in the nomination, and it's still kind of secretive to me. I'm not sure quite how it all came about, but you know, as a scientist, we beg, borrow, almost it's steel. Uh, to try to get money to support research for all the endeavors that we have. Uh, but this was an unusual situation, and then one day you just get a contact saying, congratulations, you're going to be given an award. But I, I didn't apply for anything. And this is, how does this work? You, know, you, can't, you can't get something without begging for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so it's especially great to be here. Uh, right now, actually, at this very, uh, I just finished class about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so I'm really happy to be here and feel feel relaxed with everyone. Um, you, you heard a lot about me already, but I was a student here from 1967 to 1971. And those were amazing years, exciting years uh, to be here, but also the years of real tension and concern in the, in the world in this country. It was the year of Vietnam, and we were sharing together my classmates, as you all know. Uh, we are sharing some of the early times there. And we were lucky people that we were able to get an education at North Dakota State that could help us have a career and, 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 and help support the things that I think are good things in this country. But I, I, I arrived here as a very naive young man uh, from Western North Dakota, the Dickinson area. Had no idea what science was about or anything. But I, my parents, our parents, um, were really uh, strongly emphasizing education. They didn't have a chance to get much education, but they pushed hard for us to do this. So they sent me away at a very early age uh, in Dickinson. I didn't think to go to Dickinson High School to Trinity. They sent me to the Assumption Abbey, which is a, a monastery about, eight, uh, about uh, 20 miles on, the, on this side of Dickinson. Uh, and it's a fantastic place. It had a great high school, and I was able to learn there from people who had PhDs and master's degrees from all over the world. And they just instilled a desire for learning there. And uh, when I finished there, they encouraged me to go on. The, the university, and I had to think about where to go. I was lucky to have ended up here at North Dakota State University. I can still remember the first chemistry class. Walked in, and there was this graduate cylinder sitting on this bench on this plate, and there was stirring, and there was color in it. And then the instructor, Roy Garvey, picked it up <laughs> and held the red, and it kept stirring because it was a magnetic stirrer. That was cool, right? <laughs> so I had to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> so then, when, as the time went on in my sophomore year, I had Socrates Peter Pappas as an uh, organic chemistry professor, a newly arrived professor at Notre Dame. After the first organic chemistry exam, he walked into the lab and said, you, 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 and he pointed to me, Clint Harrington, Steve Boss, and several others. You're going to do research with me. You guys are going to do research with Tom Harris, and you're going to do research and so on. And he formed research groups. They're on the spot. We looked into what's research. I have no idea. But anyway, we got into the lab, I did my first experiment, showed him my first result, and he literally jumped out of his chair and said, it's amazing. I said, oh. And, uh, and he said, uh, we couldn't do this before. I said, oh, um, must be pretty cool, huh? And he said, yes, this is really cool stuff. And so I got more and more hooked, to say the least. Well, <clears throat> at that time, then, at North Dakota State, that, that second year here at North Dakota State, was a very important year of my life because I was so influenced by Peter Pappas and other faculty here to go on and continue to love to learn. But I also learned to love. And uh, that was when I met my wife, Patty. And you, you saw that at all. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, 
she actually finished here, she should be getting these awards because she finished in three years. Uh, she was one of the top in her class in microbiology in the Yang School. And uh, she had an ulterior motive though because we became pretty friendly. And as you saw, we, we did become quite productive. And then she took, she took 30 years off as a microbiologist. Now she's learned, she also joined me now again in the laboratory. So I, my group does the chemical research synthesis of biologically relevant molecules. And she tells us which ones were good by doing our assays against micro, uh, various types of bacteria, including mycobacteria, but also cancer cell lines. And so then we can, within a couple days, know what we made is going to be useful for something. So <clears throat> here at NDSU, though, I have to say again, the inspiration from the teachers and the faculty was phenomenal. Uh, it, without uh, Peter Pappas, I just wouldn't have learned about the joys of science. But the faculty here that you have today is still exceptional. There is one of my teachers sitting in this room, uh, Mel Morris. Mel is right up here, I can't see, but I think you're over in that direction. He taught me inorganic chemistry. There's some great colleagues I've served on boards here, and the, the faculty here is phenomenal. Bakun uh, Sidi and Greg Cook are over there. They're two organic chemists. Remember, organic chemists are the most important people in the world. We make doctors and other people look good. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys please stand? These are the, these are the people that inspire us. I told you he was that guy in the front row that jumped up and said, I love this stuff. 